Hey everybody, welcome to the Cardboard Cave. We're here to take a look at some old cardboard today. This is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Pizza Power Game from Rose Art. This is from the 80s, I believe. It is from 1987. So, me and my brother grew up with a Ninja Turtles game from Rose Art. But it was the simpler, more basic one. This is what I would call the main one <laughs> from that era. Um, I think it's probably the more well-known one. The Rosar one we had, I don't remember what it was called. It used a spinner, and you moved around colorful spaces, collecting pizza slices and different things on a bingo card, basically. Maybe it was called Turtle Power? I don't remember what it was called. But this is the Pizza Power game from 1987 Rosar. We're going to take a closer look at all the artwork. But I'm actually going to show you a couple rounds of the game set up and ready to play. And then we'll take a closer look at all the art. Because that is really the draw, I'm being honest. Is the fantastic, wonderful 80s artwork here. Um, we will take a look at the box now, because why not? It's just glorious. Really fantastic. And again, this is from 87, so it's pretty stinking early on in the Turtles. And that really comes across in the game. If you remember the original NES video game, you can tell the developers did not have full information about the Turtles cartoon. So they're going maybe a little bit on the comic and a little bit on what they knew. This seems further along than that, but there's some funny things that you can tell they didn't have 100% information about the cartoon. But that artwork is glorious. Uh, the side says, includes plastic battle flipper for action pack gameplay. Two to four players, ages six and up. And they are very proud of the Battle Flipper, and we'll certainly show you that. Pizza Power Game. Just got a barcode over there, basically the same information. The back gives you really a great look at the game. Um, Calabunga. All of our zany, wacky, madcap adventures captured in a board game. Even that does not seem like, besides Calabunga, does not seem like something... A turtle would say. <laughs> but I love it for that. I'm not making fun. Featuring a battle flipper for pa fast-paced action. Again, very proud of that fact. Um, the contents over here. You got a deck, a game board, a deck of 24 good guy cards and 20 bad guy cards. A pizza spinner. A plastic battle flipper. Eight sewer covers. Four pawns and four bases and a die. Pretty simple components. Let's just go ahead and... Well, here's a picture of the game set up, and that really does a great job of showing it. Uh, Calabunga, the elements of good versus evil, fighting action, and a strange craving for pizza combine to provide excitement and thrills in this zany race to the Technodrome. Players travel around the city doing battle with their good guy cards in order to capture three bad guy cards. Battle is waged with the Battle Flipper, which injects skill and luck into the fast-paced play. Players may break for pizza time or quickly travel under the city via sewer travel in search of conquest. Take a chance with the pizza spinner to try to catch up in your quest to undertake the ultimate battle in the Technodrome. I did want to show you one thing when you open the box up. Um, all the instructions are right here, which is definitely a throwback. These are all the instructions. <coughs> cool little sleeve here that just you can... Kind of hold the stuff a little bit. You know, Hasbro and Milton Bradley boxes still do that sometimes. Kind of a callback, but I do love that artwork there. There's nothing under here now. I have all the contents out here, but I did want to show you that. Some pretty fun artwork just in the rule book itself. Kick some shell. <laughs> Eat hot lead, turkey. That was one of my favorite quotes from the cartoon is when Michelangelo would constantly, I mean constantly say, eat hot lead, turkey. Which doesn't even make any sense because they don't shoot guns. Rude, dude. Pizza time. Got a turtle power over here. But the best is this. Joke, quote unquote joke. Is there anything you turtles won't eat for breakfast? Sure, lunch and dinner. <laughs> I love everything about this. So, let me explain the game real quick. 
in the Pizza Power Gang. Let's just go and put this back up here. The back of the box did actually a very honest and good job summarizing it. But what you're trying to do is collect good guy cards and you start with three. The good guy cards will be numbered two or three. Three is the most powerful, two is a little weaker. All the turtles are three and Splinter and April are twos. They can also be different colors and that does matter. Because to win the game, you have to have, oh my goodness, now I've already forgotten the numbers. You have to have three different bad guy cards, and I believe it's four good guy cards. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's correct. <laughs> four good guy cards, so like it could be a purple splinter and a different color splinter. That could count as two different ones, or a purple splinter and a purple Donatello, as long as they're different in some way. And then three bad guy cards, and they range from one to three. You got Krang and Shredder that are named, but you've also got one of my favorite um, bad guys from the Turtles cartoon was the rhinoceros known as Punk. <laughs> Bebop and Rocksteady. There's Bebop. Bebop and Rocksteady are both known as Punk. I don't know if they didn't know their name. I mean, they must not have because Bebop and Rocksteady are just rated ones. Krang is two and Shredder's threes. Yep, it stays consistent with that. So the deal is, in order to even do a battle, to have a chance of collecting a, um, a bad guy card, you have to, to have a good guy card that's at least their level or more. So, in other words, you're going to have to have a three. In other words, you're going to have to have a Ninja Turtle to face Shredder. However, to face Krang, it could be a two or a three. And honestly, I'm not completely sure why it goes down to one. Well, there is a reason. I'll explain that. But anybody could fight a two or a one, really, because you just have to be equal or better. And the good guys are only numbered twos and threes. Bad guys are one through three. So, to start the game, what you do, you got these eight simple punch-out one-sided cardboard sewer tokens. There's eight of those. My copy actually came with nine, so there's an extra one. I really am happy with the eBay seller on this one. I think this game was barely played. It's hard to imagine why, because I'm sure it's a great game. Um, but anyways, you get these eight sewer covers, and you put them on the star spaces. And again, we'll show you a closer look at all this. But I just want to show you how the game works first. So there's eight manholes with the star where you start the covers. There's also four empty manholes, empty sewers, where you start. So you got four turtles, of course, and they start in one corner each. Or if you're playing a two-player game, you just each pick a different corner. It doesn't matter which one. Um, these are very simple. Uh, it's a plastic base, and it's actually two separate cardboard pieces that aren't glued or anything. I thought mine was broken, but it's not. You just put them together and then put them in the base. Hey, it works. It's basic, but it works. Um, this is before the time when like even a plastic standee would have been the norm. This is very much the norm at the time. Because honestly, this was like a... I think one I saw had a price tag of about seven bucks on it. So even for the time, it's not like it was a very expensive game. And this was before a time when games generally had fancy pieces anyways. Especially games aimed at six years and up. So anyways, everybody starts with one of those. You put out the manhole covers. You put the spinner in the middle of the board, which covers up the Technodrome. Then everybody gets three random good guy cards, which again are numbered two or three. And then you deal four random bad guys to the deck. And so the way that works, I've already got two out here. There's a border. Let's see if you can see it. There's an orange border there. And since these are orange cards they're going to start there on the orange border. That's how that works. So we need two more to start the game. This is a purple one. The purple border is over here. I know it's hard to see, but in person it's not. So this goes there. Covers up some of that lovely artwork. But again, we'll show you. Well, this is kind of... I'm going to do a different one so we have a different place. All right, well, it's just... It is what it is. We got another orange one, so it's going over here. So we got a whole stack of orange ones over there. 
So you got orange, purple, yellow, and green zones. And right now, they're not very spread out, but that's just how it worked. So this is set up for a four-player game. Every character has three good guy cards. We started out with four bad guy cards. Covered up the manholes with stars. With the sewer covers. And so what we're trying to do is fight bad guys and have good guys in front of us and bad guys in front of us. And let me just go and look because I've forgotten. To win the game... Let's see. Da -da -da. Object. Be the first player to win three battles. Da -da -da. <laughs> it's a spinner. Okay, you collect three different bad guy cards and collect four different good guy cards. Okay. That threw me off a little bit, but I think you just have to have the good guy cards in your hand. I don't think they necessarily have to be in front of you. Um, but, so how do you do that? Well, you're just going to, it's of course a roll and move game. You're going to roll the dice and move that many spaces. You're going to do what the space says. If it says fight, you'll get to fight in either quadrant adjacent to that purple fight space. So like right here, let's say I landed right here, I could fight, well in this case, I guess it's only this one that's adjacent. So that wouldn't do any good right now. There's no bad guys there. But let's say I landed in this one right here. I could fight any bad guy in this quadrant or this one, which again right now wouldn't do any good. So that's what fight means and how fights work. Well, I'll show you that in a second. Um, draw a bad guy card. You simply draw a new bad guy and you put it on the board um, in whatever color outline that matches it. Uh, if you do draw a good guy card, which is somewhere, right? The green ones. Draw a good guy card, the green spaces. And like all the green spaces are the same. All the purple spaces are fights, you know, etc. Then you simply get to draw a new good guy card and add it to your hand. And you want to have a constant supply of good guy cards because you have to have four different ones to win. But mostly, you got you to gotta have them to beat the bad guys. All right. So, what else? The pizza space. Oh, that means you you pick up, you spin the spinner. Most of it is go anywhere, which is good, because you can pick whatever you need and go there. Pick a fight, draw a new good guy card. But there's a one in four chance that you'll lose a good guy card. It just goes to the bottom of the deck. Uh, move sewer cover. So when these sewer covers are on here, they don't do anything. But once the sewer cover is moved, if you land on one of those spaces, you move it to any open space, which the start of the game is just the four corners. Okay? Now, if I end my movement there, and the rules aren't super clear on this, but you got to remember this is an old school game. When it says when you land on a space, what it really means is when you end your movement there. So, like, let's say I was here and rolled one, two, three, four. I ended my movement there. I now must. It's actually not a choice. I must roll the dice and move along the sewer network four spaces. So, like, if I picked this direction, I could go one, two, three, four. There's an open one. I could pop out way over here. But you can only go in an open sewer, and you can only pop out of an open sewer. So, it's possible you'll land on an open sewer and not be able to do anything if there's not one within that many spaces of you. So, the sewer covers, moving them around is kind of a way you, you stop your opponent's from getting around quickly, if like to where they're trying to get to, but you help yourself get around quickly. Um, so I guess there's only ever going to be four open spaces, but it may not be the corners. It might move around. And that's how you get around the board quickly. I think that's all the spaces. Yeah. Um, and I will say, I'm, I mean, it's a ton of luck. It's a luck fest, of course. But as a, a board gamer... I mean, if you've not noticed, those are all board games, and there's a lot more than that. As a board gamer, this has a little more going on than I expected, and I kind of appreciate that about it. Um, the sewer cover thing, 
gives you like a, a way to get around faster. That's kind of a neat idea. Um, the, uh, well, the spinner is another random element, but it's kind of cool. That's not the main element. That's just one thing that can happen when you land on a pizza space. And then the battle flipper I've not explained because that's the coolest part. It's got a little bit going on for a game from its time. It's more than just spin and move and roll and move. Maybe not a lot more, but a little bit more. So the goal of the game, you beat the bad guys. You got to have at least three different ones and four different good guys. And then you remove this, revealing Krang in the Technodrome. And now you can go to the Technodrome and, and fight Krang. So let's just start there. And I'll show you just a natural turn. Let's pretend I'm Leo over here in this corner. All right, I rolled a six. And looking at my hand here. Okay, I kind of, I want to land on a fight space. So let's go one, two, three, four. Well, draw a good guy card. That's not a bad thing. We'll land there. All right. Then over here is Michelangelo's turn. Two. You can go either direct, any direction you want, but it says you can't change direction during the game. Now, some people might say, well, that means if you're going this way, you can't like turn here. I don't think that's what it means. I think what it means is, like if I'm here, I could start off that way, or I can go this way, but I can't start this way, then head back that way. I think that's what it means. Like making a turn like that, I think is normal. That could have been clear, but that's how I read it. You just can't start forward, then go backwards in the same turn. So Michelangelo rolled a two. Well, he pretty much got the same thing. Draw a good guy card. Okay, fine. Uh, Raphael, let's just pretend it's going around and it's back to Leo's turn. So I can just focus on Leo. So Leo rolls again, because I'd really like to do a fight. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I move to recover. Let's do that. Oh, I don't know. Let's move this one. And let's move it here to my Mikey space. So now that one's open. All right, everybody else took the turn. It's back to me again. Three. Okay, well, let's do the sewer. One, two, three. I landed on a sewer space here. Right here, an open sewer space. So I have to roll the dice again. I got a six. But the only open spaces are the corners over here and then way down here. Um, and do I have to take the full movement with the sewer? <laughs> so many questions now that I put the rules away. It seems so simple. Sewer travel, blah, blah, blah. Move as many sewers as the number shown on the die. Okay. So I guess strictly going by the rules, you have to move the full amount. Which is how these old games work. It's kind of annoying. One, two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So here's what we're going to do. To not cheat and strictly follow the rules, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to come out down here at the corner of the board. Um, you know what? See, I'm learning this as we go. I don't think that's the intention, because what would be the point of that? I think the intention is you can come out wherever you want to. Different part of the city. When you reach the destination sewer, place your pawn on one of the adjacent... Oh, okay, yes. That is how it works. But then you place your pawn on one of the adjacent spaces. So I could either either do the pizza space or the fight. Unfortunately, there's nobody there, so I might as well do the pizza space. Let's spin this. Go anywhere. Finally, okay. I come out of the sewer. I landed on a pizza space. I spun it, and I can go anywhere. So I am going to go anywhere, and I'm going to fight. I'm going to go here because I have two choices. The orange dudes or Krang. Let's go and zoom in a little there. So right here I am. And I have the choice of these guys or Krang over here because they're both adjacent to this space that I landed on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my hand. Well, I got a bunch of twos, but I also have Donatello. The thing is, though, anybody can beat twos, and I don't have any bad guys or good guys out yet. So let's go ahead and pick on this orange crane here, right here. 
So I could pick any of my guys. I might as well do, I mean, I'm not going to waste Donatello. So I might as well use one of my splinters here. I put them on top of Krang there to show that I'm fighting. And here's where the fun is. Unfortunately, you don't just get to collect the bad guy. This is where the game can be unnerving or really fun, I guess, depending on your view. Because here is the meat of the game. You take the dice, you put it on any side you want to. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That part's irrelevant. You hold with your non-dominant hand. Hold it to the table. This actually says this in the rule book. Put the dice in the empty space. And in the battle flipper, which is a piece I haven't shown you yet. Simple little two pieces here. You got a one, two, and a three. So I'm trying to beat a level two bad guy. So I have to land in the two spot. It doesn't matter what the die says. I just have to land there. So I'm going to do as it says, put the dice in there, hold with my left hand because I'm right-handed, and I'm trying to land it here. And you get two tries. Doesn't matter how hard the bad guy is. Doesn't matter how good your good guy is. The official rules say you get two tries. So here we go to land here. And I've never done this before. Um, I got this game. I put my cards in sleeves just because it's, it's an old game. This is my first time trying this. All right, I landed in the one. They do give you some tips in the rule book, though. It says, hold this and keep your finger here to follow through, it says, after you flip. And also, don't flip too hard. The rule book says you're trying to land in one of these spots. You're not trying to land in your friend's eye. That's what the rule book says. And it also says to give yourself some practice before you start the game. They knew this was tricky. Nope, I didn't do it. I landed him one again. All right. So let's just do a couple more turns here. Zoom back out a little bit. We got Leo here. Right here. Let's see. Three. Let's do another sewer movement, maybe. I uh, don't know if we have a choice. Okay, let's do one, two, three. I landed on a pizza spot, so I'm going to spin the pizza spinner. Oh, no. I lose a good guy card. So I got to pick one to lose. Oh, by the way, Krang stays here on the board because I did not beat him, but the splinter goes to the bottom of the good guy deck. And now I just lost another one. I guess we'll pick April. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> All right, let's say everybody else went. Now it's back to me. A four. I really want to do another fight. Here's a one, two, three, four. Draw a bad guy card. Okay. This can help everybody. It's not just for you. Good grief. All the bad guys are piled up here in the orange zone. All right. Say so everybody else went. Back to me again. Six. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Six, one, two, three, four, five. Here we go. Six. Fight. All right. This zone is adjacent to where I landed. So, unfortunately, I've only got two. But I'm going to use Splinter again because I don't have a Krang. So, I might as well. Again, you have to have three different bad guys to win the game and four good guys. So, like, if I already had an orange Krang, this really wouldn't do me any good. But I don't. So, I'm going to try. So, that. And I try to use my Splinter on them. So, I'm putting it there. And then we're bringing out the battle flipper again. And I get two tries. It's another two. In fact, the same two. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to say that counts. Because when we level it out, that's where it falls. There we go. So it doesn't matter what this says. I landed in the two. So what I do now, I put Crane in front of me and Splinter. Those both go in front of me. So I guess since you have to have four good guys... I assume that means in front of you, not just in your hand. That's my assumption. So I guess you're going to have to pick an extra fight at some point. I don't know. That seems kind of weird. But it says you have to have four good guys, different ones, and two, I'm sorry, three bad guys, different ones. Could be different color or different character. So let's say it's gone a while. Let's, uh, let's just do this. Let's say I've got something like this in front of me. All right. Something like this. And let's say I got this. And this. Okay. So right now what I have over here. 
Let's say the game's going on a while. I have three different bad guys, because those are a different color. That counts, plus Shredder. Then I got Michelangelo, Raphael, April, and Splinter. So I got four good guys, three bad guys. Now, what happens over here, this comes off. It's still in the game. You just put it to the side. Excuse me. Put it to the side. The Technodrome's now open. So as you can imagine, it probably took me a while to do that. <laughs> I have to use this Battle Flipper. But let's say I did it. Now, I've got it locked in. My whole objective now is to make it to the Technodrome. The only way to make it to the Technodrome is to pop out of the sewer on either any of the four corners of the Technodrome. So, like, let's say this one was here. Now, let's say I rolled a three. We're just going to speed this long. I rolled a three. One, two, three. Oh, I got to roll the dice again. Ah, the exact movement thing kills me. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three. That really does kill me. Let's say I managed to do it, though. I'm going to tell you, I would house rule it. The, the rules are a little unclear on this, but I just know how these old school games worked. It probably means exact. You got to use the full movement. But I would say you can use any amount of the movement with the sewer. So like I rolled a five when I landed on the sewer. I would say if I want to, I can pop out here. All right. I popped out here. One of the four corners of the Technodrome that are open. So they have to be open to even do it. So like if somebody's got all their cards, you can move sewer lids to try to block them. But let's say I did it. So I enter the Technodrome here. And to defeat Krang, actually what you're trying to do is steal the mutagen ooze, I think it said, from the Technodrome. Whatever. I've entered the Technodrome. I have to. <laughs> and let me make sure I got this right. You To win, you have to. Blah, blah, blah. In order to win the game, you have to collect three different bad guy cards. Um, you must collect four different good guy cards, but that's not all. You have to enter the Technodrome, the way I just said, by sewer travel. And then, you must fight the ultimate battle. Flip the die into each of the three number compartments with four tries. They don't have to be done in order. If you don't succeed, you go back to the corner you started at. So, you don't lose your good guys and bad guys. Thank goodness. But I only got four tries to get it in three spaces. So here we go. Let's try it. Um, how was I doing this before? Like this. Let's give you... Let's say this game's been going on. It's been a hard-fought battle, but here we are. Leonardo in the Technodrome. I gotta get it in the one, the two, and the three in any order I want to. But I only get four tries. I'm gonna try the three first because it seems the hardest. All right, well, I got the two. That's one try. I got the one. I have two tries left to make it into the three. Oh, one try left to make it into the three. Oh, that was terrible. So he goes back to his starting spot. And you just try to make your way back to an open sewer cover, pop out, get in the Technodrome, and try it all over again. Uh, let's try it one more time. Let's say I've done all that and I've made it back here. All right. I'm going to try that three first. It just seems the hardest. Oh, I did it. I got in the three. Okay. I got to get in the one and the two with three tries left. All right. I just got to get a two with two tries. Oh, got to get in the two with one try. Yeah, I did it. So that would be it. If I'd already, and again, I just sped through this. If I'd already collected at least three bad guys, four good guys, and then made it to the Technodrome and did that, I would win the game. Um... So I've not yet played this. I really do genuinely hope to. I've not yet played this against other people. But I've shown you how it works. Um, I really truly believe this game would take a long time to actually legit uh, finish. Um, because you're going to keep messing up. To just get one card in front of you, you have to land in that numbered space. And you have to have a card to even face it of at least the same value. Um so you're just going around the board, landing on spaces, collecting good guy cards, fighting bad guys that you still need to collect. Um, 
and then eventually popping out in one of the four corners and facing the Technodrome. So that's it. I can't review it per se, um, but it is a game of its time, but I do feel like it has some kind of neat things going on. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the components a little more closely. Um, let's see. We're going to take these off the board because they, unfortunately, as you put the bad guys out, they cover up the, in my opinion, phenomenal artwork. I mean, it is of its time, but in, in my opinion, in a great way. Um, let's see here. So, your components. First of all, you have a stack of good guy cards that are pretty basic. Um, they are, in fact, your basic cards like the original Monopoly had. Square cornered. Um, not high quality at all. If this game were going to get a lot of play, I would put it in sleeves. Um, this one's in phenomenal shape, though. I really don't think it was played much at all. But yeah, just a deck of those. And the artwork's pretty simple, but I do like it. That's pretty much it there. And then you got the stack of bad guy cards. I think there's just 20 of these. Not a lot to see. Bebop and Rocksteady, I don't think I've shown you as much. But other than that, it's just different colors of the same things. Then you got the Pizza Spinner, which is basic, simple, but works well. And I love this pizza itself. That's fun. There's definitely anchovies on it. Uh, these sewer covers are cheap, basic cardboard, but they do the job. I'm sure the game originally came with a punch board. You had to punch all this out. You probably had to punch the cards out. That's what these look like. But I don't know. They, they Maybe not because they are cut really cleanly. These are strange, the, the standees, because they're two pieces. And as you can see, at least over time, the cardboard is really frayed. But at the same time, they're chunky. They hold in the stands well. They do the job. Um, it would be fun if like, it showed the back of the turtle on the other side, but it's not. It's just two pieces of cardboard you stick in here, basically. <sighs> and I've already shown you the box. I've already shown you the box. Oh, a regular six-sided die. Battle flipper, which is lightweight and basic, but it seems well-made. Um, and you don't hit it hard. So really, as long as you show the... If you're playing it with kids, as long as you show them how to use it, hold it with one hand, put the dice in, and while you're holding it down, you flip it, and just keep your finger there. It says to keep your finger there for more control. You know what? I think I kind of like this. I mean, it's kind of random. Like, I can't tell you. All right, let me try it three times. Three, two, one. I'm going to try to land three, then two, then one. Let's see if it really is random or if I have control after playing for a few minutes. So, so three. Nope. All right. Two. <laughs> nope. And one. <laughs> I got the one. Eh. I, I think it's probably something you get better at over time, but it also is supposed to be a little random. But, all that being said, in my opinion, well, I showed you the box. It's gorgeous. But in my opinion, this is the star of the show right here. The gang board. And I know the glare is bad, so I'm going to show you close up. So down here we have... Actually, let me just turn all these away a little bit. I think that will be for the best. Get rid of the glare. I said turn away. All right. Look at this battle going on down here. So that's the yellow zone, as they call it. I could just get lost in this artwork, though. That's the yellow zone. Um, over here, we have the purple zone, which is like a street scene. Then moving over here, we're upside down. I apologize about that, but we got, I guess this is another street scene with where they're facing the shredder. Then over here, we got the layer. 
Um, and I just love that so much. And then in the middle of the board, we got the Technodrome with Crane hiding out there. And overall, I just adore the way this game looks. And no matter where you're sitting, you will be facing one side of the artwork. You know, if you're over here, you can your head onto this. So you got something cool to look at. The spaces are basic, but they do the job. For me, this is worth it for the box, which is just glorious, in my opinion, both the front and the back, and the game board. It's worth it for those two things to me. Anyways, this has been the Cardboard Cave. This has been the Turtles Pizza Power Game. The star of the show is the artwork on the board and the battle flipper itself. It's a luck fest. It's a roll and move fest. I do believe it's going to get frustrating trying to get all those cards and then still having to hit all three targets. I mean, you saw me do it on my second try, but if I were really playing the game, I would have had to go all the way back to my starting corner, make it out of a sewer hole by exact count, and do it. Um, I think it's probably going to take a while to actually finish a game in real life. But this game is ripe. There's enough going on here with the cool board and the sewer movement and the battle flipper. The good guy and bad guy card is not a bad idea. I think there's enough going on here with a few tweaks. This could be a fun, nostalgic game that's a luck fest. It's good with kids, good with turtle lovers. It's never going to be a strategic game. But I think a couple of tweaks. Um, and this one, I'm not even 100% sure what the rules intend. But the first thing I would change is when you land on an open sewer, you hop in there and you roll the dice, you can move up to that number of spaces. So like if I wanted to go one and hop out here, I could do that. I don't have to go one, two, like three. That's my opinion. Make this like, I think that's straight up something I would change. And I'm not even 100% sure that's not what the rules mean, but I doubt it. Because they just didn't think that way in 1987 with board games, honestly. But I would change that. The Battle Flipper, I know some people, I've heard people say it's just too hard to do it. It makes the game take too long. But I would not, there's no way I would get rid of the Battle Flipper. Maybe I would give you more tries. You only get two tries on a normal fight. Four tries on the Technodrome fight. I might say you get three tries on a regular fight. Five tries on the Technodrome. Something like that, I don't know. That I might tweak if it's just painfully long. Other than that, I mean, it is a roll and move game, so you're not going to put a lot of strategy in it. But I would probably just do that and see how that works. If it still takes too long and it's a slog, maybe make it to where you only have to have two good guys and three bad guys or something. I don't know. But anyways, this is, it is what it is. It's a game of its time, but I kind of think it's beautiful for what it is. And if nothing else, I love the artwork. Thanks for checking out the Cardboard Cave. Please let me know what your thoughts below. And uh, if you played this growing up, please let me know. How was the Battle Flipper? Do you remember being frustrated with it? Was it fun? Please let me know. Thanks for checking out the Cardboard Cave. We'll catch you next time.